In this video, we're going to install a double-sided heatsink onto an NVMe SSD, install it into a PS5. More importantly than that, we're going to talk about how there's a lot of confusion and misconceptions and a lot of false information on the internet and YouTube floating around right now about what NVMe SSDs will actually work. Now, surprise, surprise, if you're going off of Sony's minimum requirements, that ain't going to cut the cake. And the, the cake in this case is your PS5. Then we're gonna talk about what M.2 NVMe SSDs on the market currently, Gen 4 of course, currently are supported on the PS5, which ones are borderline not stable, which ones simply do not work at all, but people are saying they do, they don't, and what heat sinks will actually fit and still allow you to put that slot over the module. And you are gonna see firsthand when I boot up my PS5 with that expandable NVMe SSD drive, what it tells me considering I refuse to join the beta program and you probably should too let's get it get my ergonomics right for this video. Alrighty Stallions, a good place to start this video would be going over the minimum requirements as recommended by Sony. So sharing my screen over here, we have an article pulled up and this will of course be linked in the description below. PS5 software beta program. If you click on this here, you can sign up right here. Then they will reach out to you with an invite. Then you have two roads in front of you. One involves weeks of painstaking crashes, bugs, and glitches on your PS4 or 5. And the other one is a smooth two to three week transition into the public release. I will cover that topic more in depth at the end of the video. Now this is what we're looking for right here, guys. M.2 SSD requirements. Then this might not look like a link, but it is. Minimum requirements. This is where there's a lot of confusion, even from other content creators out there. So PCIe Gen 4, there's actually two different versions or two different generations, first gen and second gen of Gen 4. So think of it like a midlife refresh. The first generation simply will not work because it does not have the sequential or consistent read and write speeds necessary. Capacity, 250 gigs. I have not been able to find any 250 gigabyte models that have the required read and write speed, not to mention if you're already doing this installation, that is not enough storage. That is literally, that is literally two AAA titles. For 99% of people watching this video, I would strongly recommend that you do a one terabyte upgrade. Two terabytes is pretty pricey. You're looking at about 360 to $400. Four terabytes, you're looking at close to a grand. Now the NVMe SSDs that we're gonna look at in the one terabyte flavor are all $200. Whoa, that one went down in price. That one's 180 right now, guys, jump on that. That was actually one of my runner ups for what stick you should uh, pop for, but $20 cheaper, that might pull her ahead. So this is my most genuine advice for you guys. Go with one terabyte. That is a noticeable boost in your storage, but you're still getting the best bang for buck. Now over here, they talk about cooling structure. A heatsink is required, absolutely is required. There's no two ways around it. Now, most of the heat sinks that I have linked in the description below are dual-sided. In fact, the one that we are gonna install in this video is double-sided. So it sandwiches the bottom and the top of the card. So you're getting more heat dissipation, more overall cooling, and there is thermal pads that kind of dissipate that heat even further. You do need a heat sink. It is not um, optional, it's mandatory. Now right here, a sequential read speed of 5,500 megabytes or 5.5 gigabytes per second or faster is recommended. This is their bare minimum requirement. So if you get an NVMe SSD that is rated for 5,500 and it dips below that mid game when you're pulling data from that NVMe SSD, prepare for a crash. Now, is it going to destroy your console? Probably not. Most likely, I would say no. It'll probably just reboot, but it's going to keep happening. It's going to keep crashing every time you're playing that game when it shivers below 5,500 megabytes per second. So all the SSDs that I have pulled up here, which are linked in the description below in order of which one I would go for, are all rated for 6,500 or 7,000 megabytes per second. So you're safe there. You don't want to go with the bare minimum. You're, you're, you're really living life on the on the edge there so as for form factor 2280 is by far the most common size that's what all all of these are up here and that's what we're going to be installing today and then they talk about the dimensions which aren't really going to matter for you guys because you're going to use one of the ones that are linked in the description so there's no second guessing or wondering is this going to work all the ones down there work and they tell you that sata ssds aren't supported well i should hope not sata ssds are 2.5 inch drives it's not going to fit in that little hole you can try and shove it in there, but it just it won't go. So I have some notes pulled up right here, and the majority of this will be copied and pasted into the description below. So we already looked at this right here, which is the minimum requirements. So there are two 
NVMe SSDs that have out of the box support, meaning they don't require you to install a heatsink board or anything like that. And the one that Mark Cerny, which is the head architect and lead designer who designed the PS5, the one that he recommends is actually the one that we installed here today. And that is the Sam's and that is the WD Black SN850. However, he recommends this one right here, which starts at $550. Now I have seen him get down as low as 370, but still you're getting the exact same NVMe SSD here. It's the same, it's the same memory, but we're just gonna manually add ourselves a heatsink for about $12 price savings, right? And again, you know, 500 gigabytes, $120. I don't really think that, think that's enough storage. Two terabytes, $400. I'm telling you guys, one terabyte is the money. And then there is another model that is uh, out of the box supported, i.e. it already has a heatsink on board, and that is the Gigabyte Aorus. $400 though, for a top and bottom sandwich style heatsink that you can buy for $15 separately and install on a $200 NVMe SSD. So we're gonna go ahead and close those. This is the one that we're going to be installing today. But if this is sold out for some reason or you don't like Western Digital, granted, they've been in the memory game for like decades. Um, this is also really good. Samsung 980 Pro is still rated for 7000 megabytes per second. I would trust it. Same thing with the Sabrent Rocket, which is on sale for 180. That it was not when I uh, originally shopped for my NVMe SSD. And again, this is rated for 7000 read. It's fast. But again, one terabyte, 180. Two terabyte, 360. Four terabyte, four terabyte, $900. This one's actually rated for 7,500 read. However, I don't know how consistent those numbers are, but this one will get the job done very well. $200. Two terabyte, $450. So as for heat sinks, I'm not going to pull all of those up like we just did for the NVMe SSDs because there's not a whole lot to look at with them. But the one that we do use in this video is this one right here. And I do recommend going with a heat sink that is top and bottom. So that way it is dissipating heat uh, a little more efficiently, I would say. And they all include and they all include a double sided thermal pad, which is basically think of it like thermal paste, but it's a more solid pad that allows you to stick the the memory on there. For the sheer sake of following along with the video, I would just recommend getting the NVMe SSD and the heatsink that I did. So I will say right now, right up front, that I do recommend when you are shopping for one of these NVMe SSDs that you use one of the links in the description below. That is not because I care about the two cents of commission from Amazon that I will get for referring you guys with my link. That is because if you type in manually, one of these names, you might be safe if you match up the picture and the serial number and whatnot, but there are different versions of PCIe Gen 4 memory. So just to take all guesswork and confusion out of the equation, I've simplified it by putting links in the description below. All right, let's install this thing. All right, boys, now this audio is out of my iPhone 12's built-in microphone, so obviously the quality is gonna be a little subpar. This is uh, basically a simulation of what it was like to watch YouTube in 2009. So what you're gonna do now, Stallions, the first step, and this is very important, you're gonna take your custom AIM or Hex Gaming controller, links in the description below to a little coupon code, or, you know, your standard missionary position controller. You're gonna go ahead and hit the PS button. You're, you're gonna fully shut down your PS5. You don't wanna put her into standby mode. You wanna shut her down completely. Now we had a bunch of lightning storms here last week because it was Thursday and that's pretty par for the course of a Thursday. We had some pretty nasty thunderstorms here last week and my PS5 actually completely lost power three times within an hour. Um, you know, and I was stupid enough to keep turning it back on to think uh, I can squeeze a little ratchet and clank uh, rift apart in. Um, and it would just shut down completely. Um, it isn't like that very much. The PS4 didn't like it, and the PS5 certainly doesn't like it either. It goes into a little recovery, uh, safe boot mode and whatnot. So uh, we're gonna have to unplug this bad boy from the wall to install that SSD. So uh, shut her down all the way. One more for good measure. You guys see me over there? We got two mics, two cameras. I wanna make sure you guys see this install from all angles. This is 4D here. This is true. PlayStation Inception. First thing you need to do is remove your stand. Now it is mandatory that you use the stand. That's the first thing it says in the instruction manual. So I hope to God you're using it. If you have it in your entertainment center and it's horizontal layout, then it will be held on literally by friction. You can just snap it off like that. If you do have it in vertical orientation, like I did originally with my last entertainment center, then you do have a screw under there with a nice big flat tip, nice old flat tip. So the side that you are gonna pop off to get to the uh, NVMe SSD slot is the side without the PlayStation logo right there. So removing the side panels here, I've seen a lot of other YouTube videos out there where people just pop them off and I gotta admit I was guilty of it on the uh, initial install of this vinyl decal or skin if you will. Uh, I basically just popped them off. Luckily I didn't snap any of the plastic tabs or anything like that. But you don't want to do that boys. No sir, you do not. What you're gonna do is take your Gamer Heaven beach towel and set that down first so you don't have a uh, 
slippery surface that you're slip sliding around and also you don't want to scrape your PS5 or your desk so you can do this with a standard towel but obviously you're going to gain frames per second in your console by using this particular towel plus it's woven with Egyptian Wookie pubes so you know it's soft it's just yank it off and then make it look real easy in the video so what you're going to do with your left hand you're going to put a little bit of pressure right here on the bottom left where the AC adapter is the power plug and then with the uh, your right hand you're going to put pressure on the top right here and peel and you are gonna hear, hear a little bit of a snap or pop. And this bad boy is going to pop off. And as you can see, good, we didn't break any tabs or anything, sweet. And this is the business end over here. You have your expandable slot for the NVMe SSD. If you get a stuck disc in the optical drive, uh, if you did go with the disc version, which I strongly advise you do, I have a separate video as to why you do not wanna go with the digital only version of a PS5. There's a class action lawsuit going on uh, against Sony Considering the only place you can buy digital games is from the PSN, they charge eh, 30 to 60% more than uh, digital codes from other vendors as well as disc versions. Anyway, but if you get a stuck disc, you got four tiny uh, Phillips heads right here and you are able to actually access your disc drive. You wanna upgrade the built-in fan, you do have uh, four T8 screws in here and you can get access to your fan. So if you wanna do some, some basic upgrades, some bolt-ons, we might actually do a full teardown of this PS5 in the near future. But for now, but now what we need is a very tiny Phillips head screwdriver. So, oh, Jesus Lord. All right. Forget sometimes that YouTube magic gets a little out of hand. Yeah, <sighs> pretty sure it's the only install video on YouTube that gives you a double cam review like this. If that kind of thing tickles you in the gamer nether regions, make sure you guys subscribe. Now you can wear yourself an anti-static shock, uh, shock bracelet. I know a lot of PC builders use that. I have built six PCs. I've never once worn one of those. I guess I just live life dangerously, but yeah. So this is access to our uh, NVMe drive here. Fantastic, fantastic. So we're installing 32 gigabytes of Corsair RAM. Just kidding, that's for another video. That's for the uh, Alienware over here. The NVMe SSD we are using is the WD Black SN 850 without the heatsink. The heatsink version is about 75 to 80 dollars more expensive just for having a heatsink. Now this is the SSD that the head designer, the head architect of the PlayStation 5 recommends. Now whether it's whether it's because they have a partnership with Western Digital or it's because this is actually the best drive for the console, I'm not sure skin flap right there. Let's go ahead and put our heat sink on there as this heat sink is gonna cover the top and the bottom of our new NVMe SSD, which, which in essence should give you some pretty good heat dissipation. And make sure this bad boy doesn't cook any eggs on you. Now this is a relatively small slot, so you wanna make sure you have the correct size heat sink or you will not be able to close this slot. Now to my understanding, I'm not gonna do it here, but to my understanding, you can actually just leave the uh, cover off and basically, as long as you can get that side uh, side cover back on, you would get even further cooling by not having this slot enclosed. But I wanna keep everything OEM, everything factory and follow Sony's instructions uh, to the greatest of my abilities. You have some thermal pads here, which is basically, uh, if you guys know what thermal paste is, this is a compound that is very similar. It is a double-sided adhesive. And what this will do is make it to where the actual contact area, the surface area, uh, dissipates heat. Good, good. First try. Not perfect, but good enough for my liking. All right, go ahead and drop our little NVMe in there. Now you want to make sure when you do this that both sides have a little bit of a gap left on each side because you need to screw in the, this side to where it is secure and this side obviously is what plugs in to your uh, MOBO or your motherboard of the PlayStation 5. Now on this side you're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to apply this double-sided thermal pad Beautiful, beautiful. She's not winning any pageants, but she will work for our needs. We're just gonna sandwich her in there. Just kind of snaps into place. That's the sound of your NVMe SSD completely breaking. Just kidding. That is what it's gonna look like. As you see, we got the bottom heat sink, thermal pad, NVMe SSD, top thermal pad, and the top plate. I probably worded that much more complicated than it actually is. Now, you're gonna insert this bad boy at a bit of an angle, kind of a 45 like this, and push in. Okay, and see how it just kind of springs up like that? It does the same thing on a PC, boys, when you uh, drop in an NVMe SSD into a MOBO, into a motherboard. There's a screw right there that you can use to tie down your NVMe SSD. So we're gonna take our tiny Phillips head screwdriver, which I already put away for some reason. It does also have a little metal spacer in there as well that you are to use 
tighten her in. Not too hard now. You don't want to jack it in because you will break this uh, NVMe SSD. You just want it in there securely to where it is flush now, and it is. And as you see, we did get a low profile heat sink, so this is going to be able to put this cover on. But like I said, you can actually just leave this plate off if you got a really big heat sink and uh, hopefully just get your side panel back on. But we don't want to do that. We want a very professional OEM factory look here. Pop your side panel back on. Good, good. Snaps in, nice. <laughs> getting these on is a lot easier than getting them off. That's for dang sure, let me tell you that, sister. Yeah, getting them on is a breeze. You just push up and they snap into place. Getting them off is a, whew, a beast. A module was inserted into the expansion slot. Turn off the PS5, remove the module, and then turn the PS5 back on. What the hell? So I got the white unicorn booting up behind me right now. I had the NVMe SSD in my hand right here. And I alluded to during the intro of this video that even though you do get an invitation to the beta, as I did get the initial invite to sign up for their uh, beta testing or their new features for their console, I would recommend against that for a couple of reasons. First of all, when you go through the questionnaire, it's actually a three-step process to actually get into their beta program. And with each step, it explains more and more in depth that you are testing features that could cause compatibility issues, playability issues, boot issues, and overall crashes to your PlayStation 5 or 4 if you're part of the beta program for the 4. And then looking historically at a lot of the beta updates or patches that came out two to three weeks before the general public updates for the PS4 and 5, the whole point of that beta testing, crash those systems more or less. Test the issues with the firmware patch. So when it gets released to the public, which generally Sony has a track record of about two to four weeks, sometimes five to six, but generally two to four weeks after the beta uh, feature comes out. So in this case, expandable storage, which we technically have been waiting for for about eight months since the console was launched. Um, then it gets released to the public and it's A-OK -okay and everything's all smoothed out, but there's probably 30 or 60 people whose consoles are either completely destroyed or shoddy and not very well playable for the several weeks that they were part of the beta program. In return, you get to send some emails back and forth with Sony representatives to fix the issues, but you don't really get anything in return. It's not like you get a new console sent out to you if it gets destroyed. It's not like you get your time back that you could be playing Returnal, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Godfall. Uh, well, nobody's playing Godfall. Demon Souls, whatever. Um, while your console was having connectivity issues and crashing every time it tried to read from this external drive. The purpose of this video was to show you guys what cards are actually usable. Again, I would strongly recommend going off the ones directly linked in the description below. You can just search for these models. However, I do recommend following the links and going to the landing page that way instead of just typing them in because like I said, there are different versions. There's two different versions of Gen 4 PCIe memory. So that way you can be 100% sure, definite, that they do work. Um, all the heat sinks do work. Uh, I did put in the description, in parentheses, the exact NVMe and uh, heat sink that I used for this install. So you know, hey, it fits. He was able to get the slot, the cover on there, the shroud, if you will. Not the gamer shroud, the, the cover plate. Speaking of which, shroud doesn't call me anymore. Not since our CSGO days. I don't really know Shroud. But I genuinely do hope that this video was beneficial to clear up a lot of the misconceptions around how complicated the install is. It really isn't. Uh, as long as you get the right NVMe SSD, which is honestly the tricky part. Again, I've done the legwork and made it easy for you guys. The compatible ones are linked in the description below. And in my humble opinion, in about two to three weeks, Sony will make this firmware update uh, released to the public out of beta and everyone will be able to enjoy expandable storage. It's not cheap, but it's not too terribly expensive. Uh, the Seagate one terabyte memory expansion for the Series S and X is $220, uh, and that just pops in the back of the console. As we're looking at about $200 for the top three brands for a one terabyte NVMe SSD, and you do have to go through the installation process, but once it's in, it's in. Uh, lifespan of these cards is pretty good. You shouldn't really fry out on you for at least a decade, so. If you stallions and stallionettes enjoyed this video, smacking a like, smearing a thumb all over this video will help it to get seen by more people. So this information will reach and assist them as well, helping to get through the installation process and pick the right card, which in turn helps me grow this channel, which I greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this around the PlayStation 5, and I will see you guys in the next video, which will be tomorrow, because I do gaming news in the community and industry on the daily. Peace. Merch store. See you tomorrow.